So when someone in a community or a family is sick from something like malaria, what effects does that have on their life? Well, in this lesson, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about malaria and its burden. Its burden on families, its burden on continents, its burden on economies, on lots of different things. So we're going to start out with the example of a family. This family could live on any continent. This family could be really any size. And this family has two parents. And let's just say they have two kids. There may be a young family. All right. So let's take a let's just kind of take a little journey through maybe their case when they're bitten by a mosquito or when some members of the family are bitten by a mosquito and get malaria. How about we imagine then that parent one is bitten, so we'll put a little X indicating they, they have malaria, and maybe the same bug that bit parent one also bites one of the children. Now you have two members of the family who are not going to be healthy very soon. And so the first thing that's going to happen is that they're going to start showing signs of illness. And when you get malaria, you get headache, you get fever, you're vomiting. There's all sorts of horrible things that happen. Um, down the road, you can get anemia, you'll have diarrhea, and hot and cold flashes. It's not very fun. And when you're that sick, you can't necessarily go to work. So immediately, that is crossed out by one of the parents. Over here, you've got your kids who are going to school. And just imagine that maybe when this child gets sick, they probably don't feel like going to school anymore either. So immediately, you've now got two members of the family who are completely out of commission. They're probably laying in bed, and the other two are probably taking care of them. Now, let's say parent two, maybe it's the mother or father, then has to work more. So you're putting that parent then in a situation where they can get exhausted pretty easily. And that is a very common thing, that partners of people who have chronic illnesses have to take on more of the burden. So exhaustion leads to some other kind of sickness, and this lowers their productivity, so lowers their ability to um, work and things like that. So maybe eventually, down the road, this person can't work either. Maybe not right away, maybe not right up front, but it could happen. Now let's imagine that one of the children, or let's, I would take concentrate on the child that stayed healthy. The child goes to school for a while, but because this person over here, parent number one, was the person who was making the family's money, that breadwinner is now gone, and so this other parent is now looking for resources. And so they turn to the other kid and say, well, can you take a break from school and work? So what has now happened is that another student is out of work, or is out of school and is working. And so that is distracting them from their education, which has long effects way down the road in terms of their success or their ability to earn money down when they're, when they're older. Now let's imagine that things take for this child here a turn for the worst, and their health gets bad. Well, it's very common with something like malaria for kids and young people or people who are older with weaker immune systems that they die. So you now have lost a family member who's a contributing member to not just the emotional life of the family but also the economic life. And so with this person gone, you have now a lot less resources somewhere down the road. Down in the future, they'll not be able to take care of their parents. They'll not be able to help out with their brothers and sisters. They're not going to be able to work. So this person is now missing in the society, and that is has a great effect on the community that they come from, from to the family that they're, they're from, and it really then also increases the likeliness of these parents being sick, being exhausted, and not being able to work. Um, and in this case over here, eventually maybe this child will, when parents are healthy again, might be able to go back to work, or might be able to go back to school. But that's 
not necessarily a given. So this change right here, this change that we just marked, might be something that's kind of permanent, which could really affect their ability to get job training down the road or um, maybe do some kind of dream job that they have. Now say this person, the, the first parent, gets healthy again. When they are healthy, no. Let's say this parent now needs to try to pay for some kind of treatment. The family doesn't have very much money saved up. Maybe they have just, in savings, just $8. Well, to get a malaria treatment, it could cost uh, quite a bit. You know, you could go to the hospital and end up paying maybe $11. And so this barrier right here, this financial barrier, is uh, prolonging this illness. So this this parent right here is going to be sicker for a longer time because they can't afford the health care that they need. Or maybe they can afford the health care, but they can't afford the bribe that the people at the pharmacy are asking for or at the hospital. So you have a lot of different barriers to this person being able to get treatment. And if they can't get treatment down the road, they could get anemia. I need to spell it right. Anemia which decreases their ability to work and makes them even sicker. So down the road, they just get sicker and sicker until someday they somehow m manage to get better and go back to work. But in that time, the financial wellness of this whole family has gone down. This child has maybe worked even longer. And this parent right here is more sick and more, or is more tired and more sick and has been working harder than ever before. So you can see here, these effects are all very practical. If one or two people in a family is sick, it could have a very huge effect on the well-being of the others. And this spreads out to the community level, too, and it goes all the way up to the international level. And if you take a look at malaria in Africa, you can really see the broad effects of a disease on a continent. Worldwide, there are 250 million cases. And I'm going to put worldwide. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That is actually about the population of Indonesia. Indonesia, by the way, is the fourth largest country in the world population wise. So that is a lot of people. Now, going back to Africa, though, this cost is huge. There are, so, there are a lot of estimates out there, and this kind of thing is really, really hard to calculate. But just if we look at the cost of actually just treating malaria in a year, it's $12.5 billion. That's just to treat. That doesn't include all of those costs that we were just talking about, about people not being able to work, not being able to go to school, all the other related costs of having other illnesses or transport, things like that, none of that's counted in this. And if you take a look even further, you kind of dig a little bit further down, some economists said it actually causes a 1.3% drop in GDP each year. Now, that doesn't sound like much. 1.3 doesn't sound like much, but w the economy economies work on sort of a margin. And so if you're not able to make this 1.3% this year, you're not able to make the growth that would happen on that 1.3 in the next year. And so over time, this accumulates. And there are some economists out there that have kind of guessed that there's about a 32% reduction in GDP over the last 35 years. So that means that's basically a third of well-being. That's a third of your country's ability to make money just cut off. You can imagine that's just from malaria. That's not from HIV. That's not from any other diseases. That's just from malaria. So you can imagine then how much this is costing just in terms of money. And more than money, and really much, much more important than money, if you take a look at the death toll, you'll be even more shocked because it's around 770,000 deaths per year.
per year. And it's hard to estimate this exactly. It could be anywhere as high as almost a million and maybe even as low as half a million. But any way you cut it, that is the population of a very big city or a small country. So those are the costs of malaria. That is a little bit of an example of the burden of disease um, kind of given in a smaller set of examples. You can check out more videos like this one at allversity.org.